llegar a mi casa to go home y que mi esposa me dijera dónde está el dinero and my wife asking where's the money se lo das a otra mujer you give it to another woman y no obstante eso it's not just that llegar después de seis días a mi casa you're coming home after six days y que mi hijo me pregunte and my son will ask me papá me puede llevar al cine Dad, can you take me to the movies? Se han preguntado ustedes cómo pudiera decirle a mi hijo después que me dicen, papi, no pasa seis días en la casa. Can you, can you question yourself? How can I tell my son? My son will say, you don't spend six days at home. ¿Cómo le digo a mi hijo que la compañía me está explotando y que no llevo dinero a la casa? How can I tell my son that the company exploited me and I don't take money home? The Port of Los Angeles and Long Beach together are the largest port complex in America. 40% of the goods that are imported into the U.S. come through the ports and they end up being dispatched out to every single congressional district in America. The jobs at the ports that are uh, basically the longshoremen, the people who work on the docks, are very good jobs. Um, they have had union representation for a very long time and as a result they really make a good middle class wage. They have health care, they have retirement security, they have disability, they have you know paid vacations, sick days, all the things that really a lot of us take for granted in America. Um, but unfortunately, the good jobs stop there. So welcome to our special meeting of the Trade, Travel, and Tourism Committee. I'm Chairman Council Member Joe Buscaino, and I'm joined here by Council Member Mike Bonin. So um, I called this field hearing uh, tonight after hearing uh, numerous complaints um, of wage theft, poor working conditions, and unfair labor practices against uh, truck drivers and warehouse workers on city property under the control and management of the Harbor Department. So you have the truck drivers who are called short haul truck drivers who basically drive onto the docks and pick up cargo, cans of cargo, and take it to a warehouse or to a distribution center, or sometimes to a rail yard. Those jobs effectively are uh, independent contractor jobs, and they have been really since the trucking deregulation in 1980. Before that, they were good middle class jobs. The drivers were employees of a handful of trucking companies who had contracts and helped to move that cargo. But when the trucking industry was deregulated, um, those jobs almost overnight turned into low-wage jobs. And those drivers uh, had to own their own trucks, and they had to maintain them, and they had to, to buy fuel for them, they had to buy tires, they had to really keep those trucks up. But over time, those trucks got older and older and older. There's a saying that the ports in America are where trucks go to die. What that means is that you ended up having trucks serving the, uh, our harbor communities that are toxic. Under then Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa, um, there was a move to clean up the trucks. And so there was a, a clean air action plan. And as a part of that, a truck ban, they banned all of the dirty trucks, and then a clean truck program that effectively gave a subsidy to trucking companies, not the drivers, but to trucking companies to buy new trucks, to buy, buy a fleet of new trucks. And as a result, the diesel pollutants around the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach were reduced by 80%. The bad news is, even though the requirements from the government to change trucks um, was put on them. They never were able to go back to Walmart, to Target, to Costco and say, all right, we were charging you, let's say, $100. Now we have to charge you $150 because the government's requiring us to have new trucks. It wasn't until there was a realization in partnership with the Teamsters that, in fact, they were misclassified as independent contractors, that really they are being treated like employees but paid as independent contractors. The drivers file lawsuits, sometimes individual lawsuits or a class action lawsuit. In every single instance, those agencies have ruled that these drivers are misclassified and that they, they are, in fact, employees.
so the whole business scheme of having employees but calling them independent contractors is one of the most profitable ways to run a business that there could be. Imagine running a trucking business in this case where you don't have to have any trucks. Imagine if you've got a deal where you've got the drivers. You can charge them to park the company truck at the company yard every single night. That's a scam. It's not representing us workers. We work, we move everything that's in your household. Realize we have a problem. We have misclassification on the court. We have discrimination. The hurting thing, Councilman Mike, is that it's on city property. And it seems like nobody cares. I'm here fighting for the woman. I'm not afraid. Low wages, no benefits, bad conditions. Who's going to... Who's going to represent them? Nobody. But now somebody is. Well, what is happening to these workers is totally immoral. immoral. You wouldn't allow for your own spouse or children to work in these conditions. Well, why should my brothers and sisters have to work in these conditions? Get it fixed. I'm fixed. Thanks to the Teamsters, I'm providing for my family. And they're fighting this fight. It is a good fight. Their, their fight for justice is epic here. Because it's not just about the port drivers here, it's about the port drivers at ports across the country, and it's about every worker in America that is suffering through the same sort of independent contracting scheme when they are in fact employees. And they're getting screwed. I will adopt the motion which, let me restate, reads, request the Harbor Department review the conditions of the leases of any trucking or warehousing companies and report on the feasibility of denying access to companies that are in violation of local, state, and federal laws, including labor and employment laws.